All right, so let's talk some Tennessee Titans. Listen, Tennessee Titans, best record in football, or at least tied for the best record in football. Uh, you got to like that if you're a Titans fan. Although I do have to say, uh, there still is a little bit of clunkiness, and I think that this is the team that could really use Julio Jones, right? Even if Julio Jones isn't a star, if he can just be like a solid number two option, that could help. I saw the offense, they, the offense got as many yards as they possibly could have in this game, given the situation, I thought, and a big chunk of it might just be, you're playing a good defense. This is what the Saints defense does, so it's hard to really say how much of it is blame on the, you know, the lack of supporting cast around Tannehill right now with Henry being out and how much of it is just the Saints defense playing well. But what I do want to say is I thought that Tannehill and his offensive coaching staff did a really good job at extrapolating as many yards as possible from this situation, getting as many points as possible. So that's what this film study is going to be about, what Tannehill did well and just how they were able to get as many points against the Saints as they could have. So let's start things off with this play. This was a good example where the Saints, you know, they're a team, that, especially this year, they've been, they've been mixing up their coverages a lot. And what they're doing here is they're going to play a man coverage plus scheme. They're going to play cover one blitz. This is what they were doing early on. It had some success early on. I mean, you see right here, we're, you know, four minutes left in the first quarter, still no points. So you're, you're keeping the Titans in check at this point. And, you know, the logic behind it makes sense, right? Tennessee doesn't have a ton of depth. Their offense is a bit A.J. Brown dependent in terms of the receiving game. So if you can take him out of the game, easier said than done. But if you can, then it's going to be difficult for Tennessee to get much going. So for the Titans, they're just going to run a pick play right here. And I thought this was fun because this isn't something that they ne necessarily uh, came into the game being ready to do. I'm not sure if the Titans were like, okay, this is what we'll be doing a lot of this game, because it's not like the Saints are a heavy man coverage team. But this is just where play calling comes into effect. And, and as, as much as we like to talk about, you know, what, what was your game plan? What did you do the week prior to the game? Sometimes it's just what calls do you make during the game? You see, okay, you're doing this. Well, we have a concept to beat it with this pick play. Watch how right when this play starts, you see that the pick play works. You have an open receiver. So you should be able to get some yards right here. But this is also kind of where if things work really well, sometimes you can get very lucky. Look, perfect throw from Tannehill. And now you just have, I mean, it was man coverage. So there's no one other than the safety who can come over and make a tackle. Eventually a corner actually is the one who gets over and makes the tackle. But everyone else had their back turn, which allowed for a big gain. So you got that one big chunk play. And that kind of forced the Saints off their game a little bit. They started doing some other stuff from that point on. So that one play really helped set things up. I also like this one where what's going to happen here is I'm going to pause it right here. You see it, they're showing blitz, right? You would expect a potential blitz. Another thing they could be doing is maybe dropping back into coverage, whether that's man or zone. This is what they're doing. It's a cover three zone blitz. So guys will be dropping back. Obviously, you're not sending everyone. I mean, you could. It could be a cover zero, but probably not. You're probably going to have some drop back, and that's what's going to happen. Tannehill at the line does not know what coverage this is. Tannehill is going to have to essentially guess here. Right when this play starts, what you're going to notice is that actually it's kind of weird coverage by Lattimore. I don't know what, what he's doing here where his hips are turned towards the sideline. Don't know why you do that. Typically in cover three, you do the opposite and you make your hips turn towards the middle of the field. So confused about that. Not sure what happened there with Lattimore, but Tannehill notices this and is going to take advantage. Look, it's a really good throw and they get near the first down. They don't quite get it. It was fourth and one. But again, he gave his player a chance. It was a good read by Tannehill. He picked up what was going on and made the play. I think for someone like Tannehill, kind of typically what you ask of him is to just do what the offense uh, is intended to do. Well, I felt like he did that and more. He did stuff that, you know, even uh, wasn't there. He did have some above, not just replacement level plays, but above like good quarterback plays. Let's talk about this one. Let's talk about this was, it was an interception that got ruled back due to a controversial roughing the passer penalty. But I think it's fair to talk about the negative as well. I don't want to just talk about positives. And here was the one negative I felt like for the Titans and for Ryan Tannehill. This was kind of his one play he'd probably like to have back it's again going to be a cover one man blitz so same coverage as the first time and what you're going to do is you have multiple receivers running you know lined up to your offenses right but are going to run all the way over to the left and given that you have no actual wide receivers lined up to the offenses left this can kind of fool New Orleans to some degree but they're playing man coverage so it's not as big of a deal usually this stuff works better against zone however it can still work 
Just the, the dilemma is now the safety who's over the middle of the field, he'll probably be able to cover up one of these two routes. Right when this play starts, Tannehill runs a play action, and he's going to make this throw kind of off his back foot, which maybe he didn't have to because you see down here, so Williams, the safety, does read this, and he's covering over the you know more underneath route. This actually wasn't uh, even, right now, he doesn't appear to be on, under either of the players that I had highlighted pre-snap, but I believe he was going towards A.J. Brown and just stopped once he saw the deeper throw. I could be wrong again about that. Again, no All-22 until Tuesday, but I like to get some Monday videos out, so usually I'll you know make the videos about the good stuff because uh, that's always fun. But anyways, you see down the field, you can see what Tannehill saw, and you can understand the logic behind this. I just think Tannehill, he needs to make sure he gets this further. Look, it's just a bit underthrown, ends up being caught by Williams there. Uh, you know, not the best, but also kind of understandable. He was trying to get it further deep. It's usually a low-risk play, but you have to make sure if you're going to miss the throw, you overthrow it. He underthrew it a little bit. Uh, so that's what I think happened. That's what I suspect happened. So not the best play, but also not the end of the world. And luckily, they caught a break with the roughing the passer, meaning that it didn't actually get called an interception. And I also liked some stuff like this where, I mean, listen, you're not going to see a lot of down the field passes in this game. Like the Saints don't give that stuff up and the Titans don't have a lot of guys who can do that. Again, other than A.J. Brown, who New Orleans is going to make sure they take out of the game as much as they possibly can. So what instead we're going to see is just a simple rub route, right? It's nothing too fancy, but this kind of stuff can really work against a third down and two. And I love this stuff. Look at how right when this play starts, you're going to notice that the rub route works well. I mean, you have an opportunity to make this throw, but what I really found interesting about this play was Tannehill's patience. I mean, he's waited two and a half seconds before making his decision, which is right around when you're going to get hit. I mean, two and a half seconds, that's basically pressures come almost always right at like that two and a half second mark. I mean, obviously there's some variance, but that's usually when it happens. However, Tannehill really wanted to make sure that this play got open. You know, I mean, you're up seven points here at the start of the second half. The last thing you want to do is turn the ball over or anything. So he's being a little bit, you know, he's waiting a little bit, whereas someone like Fitzpatrick would probably have already let the ball out of his hands. And if it gets intercepted, it gets intercepted. Tannehill being a lot more, you know, cautious in this moment, which I think is the smart decision on this play. And look, good throw. He hits who he's trying to hit. They're able to get the ball inside the five right there and convert on third and two. So that's kind of my thing about Tannehill is like, okay, these aren't highlight real level plays. He is a game manager. At least he has been uh, so far with Tennessee, but that's not an insult. And he is adding some stuff that like, I think, you know, elite, a, a replacement level quarterback, I don't know if they make that play, to be honest, even though it looks simple because you do have to navigate the pocket and get the throw there when you get it there. Maybe they do, but I don't know. So yeah, I mean, listen, Ryan Tannehill seemingly since he's gone to Tennessee has been awesome and just hasn't gotten the credit he deserves, in my opinion, because everyone gives the credit to Derrick Henry, which listen, Henry deserves a lot of credit, but so does Ryan Tannehill. Uh, and I thought Tannehill played well. And again, we grade these things on a curve, right? I, I'm a believer in you can successfully evaluate a quarterback even when they play against a good defense, even when they play against a bad defense. You just have to pay attention to that context. There wasn't stuff over the middle. There wasn't stuff deep down the field. In fact, there wasn't stuff that there usually is for the Titans. That stuff got clogged up for two reasons, you know, good defense and no Derrick Henry. But that doesn't mean that the game was worthless and you can't even pay attention to it and just wait till next week. No, there's stuff you can evaluate. And Tannehill did what the offense asked him to do and on certain times more than what the offense asked him to do. Although for the most part, he was someone who like the offense asked him to do plays, make throws, and he made those throws. It's hard to really critique a quarterback who's going to do that. You can win a lot of games of that guy. So that's what I think about Ryan Tannehill. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.